And again, we do look at meeting and implementing the requirements of legislation. What we look at there is planning rather than plans. We don't say you must have an IEP for everyone who has this, or you must have. What we look at is, are you identifying the needs? Are you assessing the needs? Do they have an additional plan where they need it? And are the targets in that plan the targets that that young person needs to help them make progress in their learning? And if I look at that plan over time, can I see that they have made progress in their learning? So if someone's had a series of IEPs over a few years, would I be able to look back and say, well, here's how they've progressed. They had difficulty with this, but this was done and this has, be, this has resulted in improvement. So what I'm looking at in terms of young people with additional plans is, are those plans effective? Are the targets good enough to help them to make progress in their learning? And are, they, are the young people involved in the targets? Are the parents involved in the targets? Are the staff involved in the targets? And are they all taking responsibility? I think uh, Margaret alluded to the fact that assessment isn't a one-off process. It is an ongoing process. And part of that ongoing process is monitoring progress. Whether you use an IEP or any form of plan, it's the doing of it and the tracking and the monitoring that has the impact rather than the having of a plan. You know, you can have a plan and stick it in a filing cabinet. It's not really going to do you any good. 